We have heard that there are sounds of gunshots just moments ago in Kyiv. Listen here. A very chaotic situation at the moment. You have people trying to flee, get to get out of Kyiv because of what's happening with the Russians invading. And we don't know who, sh who fired that gun, but we can see show you here that it's, we're at a train station in Kyiv. This was just a little time ago. And Trey Ying joins us again to give us some perspective as to where this is and what's happening. Hi, Ke Hi Trey. Dana, good morning. We have heard small arms fire and air raid sirens all day in the Ukrainian capital. This is significant because... It's a big indicator that the fighting we've seen outside of the city is now working its way into the inner city limits. Ukrainian officials say that is the case, that Russian forces have now breached the city limits of Kyiv and they are working on invading the Ukrainian capital. It's not just here, though, that this fighting is taking place. We've seen images from across the country in Kharkiv, the second largest Ukrainian city, and some of the southern cities and eastern cities in this country. The invasion is very much underway, despite the fact that the Russians are trying to put out this idea they would be open to diplomacy. Well, it's too late for diplomacy. There are Ukrainians dying as we speak in this country. And even if more sanctions are levied against uh, Russian President Putin and his inner circle, the Ukrainians that we spoke with today in the streets of Kyiv basically have said they are now experiencing the worst case nightmare scenario. So there will be efforts to try to end this conflict and try to come to some level of a ceasefire negotiation, but on the ground fighting continues and there's a very real threat that today, tomorrow or in the coming days, the capital of Ukraine could fall into the hands of Russian forces. And there are a variety of concerns that come along with that reality. Things like the possibilities of human rights abuses. Analysts are concerned that Russian forces could actually come into the city and then target politicians and journalists, those who have been uh, Basically, and off in the distance, I can hear some of that fighting. It, it's continuing. And, and the reality here is that people could be in danger. Civilians could be in danger. And as we speak, people are underground. They are afraid that the Russians are going to continue their air campaign. And they are in the middle of an active conflict. Dana? Trey, it, it is coming up, I believe, to 530 local time where you are. So the sun's going to set within an hour or thereabouts. Uh, you've been through two days and two nights of this now. Is there any pattern that you have seen on behalf of the Russians, or has been day two dramatically different from a military standpoint than day one? How would you characterize that? Initially, we thought that the Russian raids would only take place during the night, that they would only target the city in the nighttime with the cover of darkness, but that has not been the case. We have seen bombings take place during the day, we have seen the advancing of Russian forces in broad daylight. And it really is partially an indicator that the Russians are not trying to hide what they are doing. An interesting part of this conflict that we have seen develop is the use of technology and the fact that people all around this country and people in Russia and Belarus have smartphones. And they've been able to get on TikTok or on Twitter or on Instagram and post videos of Russian forces staging and then ultimately moving into Ukraine. And it's given not only the intelligence community here and the, the politicians who are preparing a defense and response to these Russian movements, but also the general public, a sense of just how dire the situation is. People can open their smartphones and see that Russian forces are moving in on their home, a city of three million people. And that is the reality today. We are seeing these videos come out and then the statements to confirm that the videos are indeed accurate, that Russian forces are currently inside the city limits of Kyiv in the northern part of the city, and they are trying to work their way downtown and ultimately, as we understand, try to target the government and ultimately change who is in power here in the capital of Ukraine. Trey, for, when it comes to the city or the, or the federal government in Ukraine, whichever runs the train system there, do you get the sense that the, they are still firmly in control? I mean, obviously, they have a huge amount of people that are crushing each other to try to get into those trains. I understand the urgency. But do you have the sense that the city is still functioning fairly well? The city is still functioning, though we don't see a lot of cars in the streets. Also important to remember, there is martial law in place right now, so there is a curfew for everyone. So in the middle of the night, you see no one on the streets of Kyiv, no cars, no people. And even as we were out today, there were very few signs of life. Everything is closed down. Some of the shop windows out front of where we are based here in the Ukrainian capital have totally pulled down their displays. They understand that 
when war takes place, and you can hear a little bit of movement behind me there, um, when war takes place, there is a, a lot of uh, consequences. There are a lot of consequences to conflict. And the Ukrainian people understand that well. It's a country that has been at war for more than eight years in the eastern part of Ukraine. But here in the capital, people have to brace for the worst case scenario. So those who do have a place to go in the western part of the country are doing so. And that's why we've seen the traffic outside of the city on the expressways. Those who have no place to go are going underground to avoid the Russian bombing. And those who are simply going to stay and fight are picking up weapons. They're getting weapons from the government, and they say they will defend their capital city. Trey Yinks, terrific work in Kyiv as the sun begins to set there on day number two. We'll see what we get when night falls. Thank you, Trey Yinks, there for us today. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.